So ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, and this is the latest in a series of the podcast on our Secrets of the Damned uh, project. Just before we start, we'd like to uh, send a shout out to the County ME, which is the uh, uh, media wing of the Bangor Daily News for uh, papers in Maine from Holton to Presque Isle. Our good friend Jennifer Lynn did a nice feature on us in the um, uh, March 19 edition. Uh, a lot of people saw it, and we appreciate anybody reading it. It also was published in the Holton Pioneer Times. So this morning, we're going to be talking about dreams. Forbidden Dreams, which of course is the new name, the second uh, part of the Secrets of the Dam series. We're here with author Jim A. Shaw. Good, say good, good afternoon, Jim. Uh, good afternoon, Jim. <laughs> I love, I love him. That's why uh, he's got a good sense of humor. So, Forbidden Dreams is the new name of part two of the Secrets of the Dam series. Before is Vanderberg House, and like the previous uh, version of the Kirk. It's a revised and updated edition of the original publication from a number of years back. Now, Forbidden Dreams has a different concept than the uh, first book, The Kirk, but all three books in the series will be linked, and Jimmy's going to be talking a little bit about that. Jimmy, you said this Forbidden Dreams is a story within a story within a story. Yes, I did. It's a story inside of a story inside of a story. Uh... Here's the thing. Um, when I was writing these things, I was really fascinated with uh, the genre, the thriller genre, and I was interested in the the uh, mystery genre, and of course my favorite genre is the science fiction. And I thought, well, no, fantasy. Sorry, I got changed that. I apologize. And I thought to myself, why can't I combine all three in one book? Where's a written law says I can't? I don't remember Moses, Moses bringing it down from the mountains written in stone. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I decided I'd do that. So if, if someone reads the book and says, well, this is a great thriller. Someone says, what do you mean a thriller? This is a mystery book. And another person says, I don't know what you guys are talking about because it's pure fantasy for me. Well, they're all right. Because every the three stories that this that, that is weaved together to make forbidden dreams uh, are... There's a, there's a definite mystery, there's absolute thriller in it, and um, there's a whole segment over half of the novel, the dream segments, which are all fantasy. Now, Jim, uh, we know that the audiobook version of uh, Forbidden Dreams has uh, is started as well, uh, well with our good devotee voice actress, Nora Aga from, uh, from Ontario. Nora's been working on it. You're up to uh, Chapter 5 in the audiobook, her, uh, her interpretation of the book, Jim? Yes, she agreed to do the second book. Okay. And so far we have five chapters of it completed. Now the the audiobook release would be what uh, June, July? It's going to be in the s well, she's uh, going to finish it uh, second week of June. And then of course, as per usual, there's the two week delay. Yeah. yeah. For their, for uh, Audible to do their their um, Quality control stuff and manipulation, and then July first should be should be it should be the release date. So tell us a little bit about Forbidden Dreams and not giving away too much. Uh, I mean, Jack Stevens and the Kirk are a great uh, uh, hero lead character. Forbidden Dreams. Could you tell uh, the listeners and the readers uh, some of the main characters or the main plots in the uh, book? Uh, Forbidden Dreams deals primarily with in the beginning with. Uh, three kids. They're probably any, uh, anywhere from 16 to 18 years old, these three guys. And uh, two of them just so happens to be exploring a haunted house this evening. And uh, one of them, well, the, they all grow up in this small town. And this particular house has a particular uh, group of uh, stories or legends surrounding it and it's considered to be taboo you're not supposed to be there it's a bad 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 mm -hmm, place mm -hmm. well the the most dominant of the three male characters the kids he's convinced that the stories are all a load of hor horse shit so or caca or caca whatever you want to say <laughs> but horses do yes but anyway he decides he's going to go up there and prove everybody wrong now this is he's a very strong-minded young fellow he convinces one of his buddies to go up there with him on the pretense that he lost his wallet up there a night earlier. So they're up there and, and it goes from bad to worse, basically. 
uh, because what they do is they discover uh, they discover a multitude of things going on up there at the old Vandenberg house. Vandenberg house is the is the name of the house in the in the story, and it was also the original name of the novel. Um, but we changed it. We had some problems with Amazon and the previous publisher. And so I just decided to pull the rugs out from underneath them and I uh, rewrote the story, made some revisions and changed the title. And like we want to remind the, uh, the listeners and readers out there, Jim, you, uh, they held your book for about six or seven years. I this think. one, yeah, seven years. Yeah, and now Jim has every opportunity, if he wants to, to change uh, around things or improve them, similar to what George Lucas did with the Star Wars, uh, well, now I think we're, you know, movie 11 or 12 or something. Now, Jim, uh, the Vandenberg House, we, uh, we did a photo essay this past fall of uh, Broadway uh, Cemetery, and the Vandenberg uh, House, like the, the inspiration is the... Uh, the Art Slip house, of course. Yes, one of them. There was two houses, but yeah, Art Slip is definitely Mayor Woodstock. Yeah, he's it's a mayor, and his house has, has the perfect location, and his house is just creepy enough to get my imagination going way back when. And then there was another house over on the corner of Grover and St. James, and nice that area. got my uh, imagination going as well. And I decided to combine the two when I was writing the story. Now, for those who have the Kirk or listen to it, obviously this book is part of the series, but it's got a little different spin to it. Uh, you said this book and donkeys get scared Woodstock Bible belters, but there is some Satanism in this book. Yeah, as much as I bemoaned the being picked on for that for the <laughs> for the first book in the title, Secrets of the Damned. They're going straight to hell, you know. I really, there really is. There, the, the thing that the kids discover in the woods is there's an actual cult and they're, they're, they're practicing in the woods in secret. And these kids, uh, to their sorrow, discover this. And of course, you know, this, these group of people, they want to remain in the shadows and unknown. No pun intended. Uh, yeah, no pun intended. Uh, so they, they get their business to um, silence these, these guys. Now, uh, as we go along, just to remind uh, everybody, Kindle, Amazon, Audible, free trial on Audible. You can download the, uh, the app and get the book for free if you like to buy it outright. But uh, putting together Kirk, the Kirk has been a very interesting experience for all of us, especially myself because uh, knowing Jim for so long, see how much dedication. But th th this is kind of weird. River Valley Sun has given us publicity, uh, Brunswick News, WAGM is going to be down the road as well. We're getting not too bad media support on this, and a lot of people are passing the word around. But we still need sales. We need people to take time to either uh, uh, buy it or to pass it along. Because, like, Jim can back it up. Any author, sales are good. The more money that he makes, the more money he can put into future projects. Now, we're not basically uh, twisting anybody's arm here, but for the, the 11 and a half hours that the Kirk is, is a great value at 25 American. So any of our American pals or our American friends, including the Dark Shadows fan group, a little shout out to you guys. For, <laughs> I've been watching that Dark Shadows. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, you because, guys are on something. Yeah, no, no. Because Jim never never watched Dark Shadows until I told him about Dark Shadows, which is how long ago? Oh gosh, you told me about two, three weeks ago. Yeah, he's only that, and it was on the show was only on first time fifty three years ago, so never never too late. But the thing is about the Dark Shadows group and different organizations are part of, including the Night Gallery, Twilight Zone groups and stuff. People like a good thriller, a good story, and that's what uh, Secrets of the Dam is, that's what Kirk is, that's what Forbidden Dreams is. We're trying to tell just a story that people can relate to, people can just escape for whatever it is, 10 and a half, 11 hours. Jim, a couple, a couple of last things. You mentioned before about uh, an author's collective. Uh, you want to give a shout out to the local authors, maybe to reiterate the fact that maybe more authors in Woodstock should join together to promote their works? I'm aware there are authors in Woodstock. I only really personally know one, and that's Doug Arch. And he writes really good stuff, by the way. If you get a chance to get his book, The Life of a Screw, pick it yeah. up. Very good book, yeah. But uh, there are others. I mean, I, I had attempted to uh, join a writer's club here a few years, years ago, ago yeah. but yeah. they wouldn't let me in on their reindeer games, I guess. Very too handsome? Or? No, they didn't want... <laughs> I guess they didn't want bald people. Oh, well, like I said, if you, uh, you know, in my family, everybody's bald and a writer. So I would have put a well. wig on for them, but... Well, uh, listen, sometimes you got to put a wig on. Now, one thing we want to remember, everybody, Secrets of Damned on Facebook, uh, podcasts, previous podcasts are available here at this site, 
JJ Governor Corey, JJ Carrier on Facebook, Jimmy A. Shaw on Facebook. Please leave us a message, IM, suggestions. But I must say the podcast channel is still going well, including Jim's podcast. We're passing 19,000 page views as of this week, which is tremendous because this is just a startup project. And just a shout out to uh, the uh, Vampire uh, Gaming Group in St. John at a convention in Franklin on the weekend. My brother Joshua was part of that, and Joshua par uh, passed on some publicity for us to these people. So I hope you had a great time, and uh, we hope to see uh, everybody down the road reading Secrets of the Dam. And again, if there's anybody out there that has a half a million dollars that wants to start a pilot <laughs> on Secrets of the Dam, it could be Kirk, Forbidden Dreams, whatever, we're open to any funding options. Jim, uh, the importance of reminding people out there that this is a bondable project. This is a project that's going places. Yeah, that's true. We're, we've got plans for this, and we're... we're we going, have the plans. We don't have the money. Well, we're moving ahead. We're That's moving we ahead, yeah. Um, I want to say one last thing about the whole thing about this Forbidden Dreams. I suppose, I just to head off the flack that I might get, yeah, but those of you people who've read it know that uh, that I don't promote Satanism. I don't even believe Satan exists. So, to me... I could have used a grizzly bear to chase these guys. You know, it, all it all it was is this is a or a Sasquatch or, intent, but they're real. <laughs> um, I could have, uh, but, but I just needed this. Uh, well, it ties into the legends of the Woodstock area. Uh, there was a big Satanist club here in Woodstock. And might in be the still, 80s. might be still. If it is, God bless them. All the more power to them. But anyway, it ties into the to the to the to the history of the area, but it also provided me a good device to a build my characters uh under pressure and to provide the suspense and the thriller part of the novel and it is really scary i'm not going to pull no punches you're not going to sleep well if, if you read it and uh, that's what dreams are all about either good or bad anybody that dreams big and that's what jimmy's doing with his book this is the secrets of damn project so we will thank everybody for listening and again drop us a message uh, uh a story idea but please patron the, the county me uh, the story is available through facebook the bangor daily news doesn't have a paywall like brunswick news you're allowed up to five articles please read the article and if you uh, happen to, to tell anybody especially people from maine if there's people in maine that haven't heard about secrets of the dam please let them know because like that's what we do with the dark shadows group too. we're nice enough to reach out to them we mentioned the fact of our connection with maine and holton and all that they're very nice. So uh, it's a network of things. So, Jim, uh, any last words? Yeah. Uh, I'm still looking for reviews. Uh, it'd be nice if the, the some of the winners reviewed the, the novel. But the most important thing that I want to say before, I, before we end this podcast, I hope everyone's happy. I hope everyone's safe. I hope everything's going well for you. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, Nora, you're awesome, and I still think you're the best. And it's too bad you went out there and uh, never saw any of the Disney family to, to plug us. But you're on vacation. We, we totally forgive you for that. And uh, Nora, Nora is a very, very fine uh, young person. She's got tremendous talent. And if you have a chance, uh, she is on Nora Macademia on Facebook, or her married name. And I and, have to say, Mike, you're doing a darn good job. Yeah, with Mike's the editor. the editor, her husband. And it's Mike and Nora, and they're very supportive. But, you know, it's so weird. We have newspapers in the States voice actors in Ontario, people from throughout New England and the Maritimes. This is a international project now. There's no, going to be no stopping us when you get on the international level. And don't forget, the people from Maine, New Brunswick there, we like talent. We And Stephen King especially. If Stephen King has a chance to take a listen to, to this, all the power to you, you tell us uh, what you think. Because it's nice, it'd be nice to have Stephen King would tap us on the top of the head and said, good job, Jim, good job, Jeffrey, you're doing good. You know, we need blessings from the God of, of thrillers, as we say. And uh, and go see Pet Cemetery, exactly. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry, Mr. King, if you're listening. I think you're awesome, too. <laughs> We're not sucking up at all, no pun intended, I am. but you are awesome. I am. You changed the way that people looked at Maine and New Brunswick within five years. I probably wouldn't be right. All he thought was Maine. lobsters and scallops and minor league baseball and, you know, uh, hockey and stuff. And you changed the way, so... You, you paved the road for all of us in the media and in print and books, so thank you very much. So on this uh, beautiful Monday where it's flurries uh, coming, but better days, uh, and no April Fool, uh, don't play any tricks today because 
We're Montreal Canadiens fans. We don't need tricks. We need victories. No pun intended. Be the Kirk. Be the Kirk. Have a good one. Bye.